In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this Pennywise animatronic for less than $200. There's a lot of steps, so I'm going to get right into it. Let's get started. So I started by cutting my 1 inch PVC using the pants as a measurement. I'm using the PVC cutter tool, I'll have the link for this below. And I added a little bit on the end to allow for the boot to extend up. Here I'm just measuring the waist. Also keep in mind the sizes may vary depending on what size costume you buy. Now I'm adding some 90 degree elbows for the legs. Obviously cut two legs, I only showed one but obviously you need to cut two. Then we have the three piece connector, I'm going to measure the middle and then mark the sides and then cut those marks on the sides so that way the piece is still in the middle. I also recommend labeling all of your pieces as you go just to stay organized and if you need to take it apart and put it back together you'll have everything labeled and know where it goes. So here I have the three printed flange that I made. Don't worry about the bent angle that you see in that leg, I ended up removing it. To mount these, I'm just gonna use some pieces of, some scrap pieces of wood. Um, you can also, if you drill bigger holes or like make bigger holes, you can uh, just put stakes right, to, right into the ground, just like that. But I kinda want the boards, just for a little bit more stability. Now I'm just attaching the flange with some screws that are small enough to not go all the way through the piece of scrap wood. I will have the link to all the different versions of this flange in the description below. So now I'm going to take this hole saw and drill a hole through this boot that I got at a thrift store. You can purchase the actual Pennywise boots, but those are a little bit more expensive and I just decided to go with these because they were only about 15 bucks. So you can see the 1 inch PVC fits right through. So now we should be able to put the boot through the pipe and then put the pipe back into the flange. So this flange I made myself and I 3D printed. I will have the link to the 3D print file below as well as a link to my website to purchase it. You can also purchase something similar on Amazon. I'll have the link for that down there. Now we can start on the upper body. I recommend doing the same process measuring with the shirt. And when cutting all my PVC, I like to cut it a little bit longer so that way I can trim it down exactly where I want it versus if you cut it too short, then you have to cut a whole new piece. So here I'm taking my four piece connector and I'm measuring with the shoulder of the shirt. And I'm gonna cut directly in the middle of that piece and then I can cut the ends down as needed. So now I'm adding a 45 degree elbow. I ended up changing this to a 3D custom mount later, but you can get by with just the elbow. You can also heat up the pipe to bend it whichever way you want. But I ended up using mostly custom mounts just so I can get the correct position that I like. Now I'm just taking measurements of the arm and then cutting the pieces to the correct size. And once again, I'm just cutting them a little bit longer than needed and I can always go back and trim them down. Also make sure this sticks out of the shirt a little bit to allow for the hands to go on there. Now you can see I'm adding those custom joints I was talking about. These might look a little bit different because these are earlier design that I had. This will be the same situation as the flange mounts. I will have a link to the 3D print file, the link to buy them on my website, as well as a link to separate ones on Amazon that should work. And you can see there that those ones did not have teeth on them, which allows it to rotate freely like that. So here we have the reindeer motor, a wiper motor. You can go ahead and attach it to the bicep, for lack of a better term. I just ended up screwing in through those holes. I took the screws out that were there and screwed in through those holes. Then I drilled a pilot hole for the screw on the forearm. Then I used my driver and a screwdriver just to get it to the correct tightness needed. Now you can see this is how the mechanism works. I do recommend just taping the joint. Don't actually bolt it as you can see there. This will allow you to make adjustments if you need to. And I did have a lot of issues with this, so I will try and go over those and explain them as best as I can. I also recommend, even though these motors are technically outdoors, because they're meant for uh, for reindeer decorations, I do recommend taping just the out, just this line right here, just so no water actually gets in there and shorts anything out. But um, it also comes with this plug on the end. Maybe just throw some tape over that or something, just in case. You never know. Don't want anything to short and catch on fire. Okay, so we made some changes. This is a updated um, joint. Got the updated joint on here. And then what I'm gonna do to make the balloon. So the issue was when the arm came up, the balloon would be sideways like this. 
and it didn't really look like a balloon. So what I'm gonna do for this is we have the dowel with the screw. This needs to go across like this. So it needs to go this way so that it's able to rotate back and forth. And then we also need to drill a hole straight down to allow the stick to go all the way through and connect to this and then still rotate. So we're gonna do that right now. So first I'm gonna start with the smaller bit just to get us a nice hole and then we'll use the bigger one. We also want the hole to be kind of up at the top here instead of here. It's not quite in the middle, but a little bit higher, which is what we want. We want it to and I know I'm using a driver. It's okay. okay. So you can see how this works. When the arm is up, angled up, the stick can still be straight. And then when the arm is angled down, the stick is still straight. So we're gonna add some weight to this and then obviously the balloon on top and see how it goes. Okay, so once we kind of get this in the right spot, it's still not perfect. I'm gonna have to make some more changes at the end. But we're just gonna go ahead and move on. Um, once you get everything in the right spot, um, if you need to, you can rotate this to adjust here. Also rotate here, depending on how far you want. This arm to be this way. You can change this right here. And then another thing to note is I added some duct tape, a very small strip of duct tape to the screw before and then screwed it in. That way the screw doesn't unscrew itself from the turning. This one should not unscrew because it, the PVC pipe is pretty strong, so it shouldn't unscrew from there. But just add a little piece of duct tape to that and it should help out with the unscrewing problems if you have any. Got some new changes, updated mounts, and then I'm just temporarily taping them out on just to see how they go. We got this fish weight, about 150 grams, and then I put some wire through it and then stick it up through the boom stick. I'm gonna hot glue it, but for now, I'm just duct tape it. So another major change we made was drill the hole through the dowel and put the stick straight through. This allows it to rotate on the same axis versus before it was on the outside. So now this movement is a lot better. If you have the problem of the arm jolting every time it goes around, add some hot glue like this to fill that void so that it doesn't have space to fall when it gets to this point. Now I'm just adding a washer in between the motor arm and the brace. And then also make sure when if you ever reattach the brace, make sure you put it at the farthest point like this so that when it fully extends and comes back around, it has enough room to make it all the way around. I also changed out the screw into a bolt with a nut on the end. And if you keep the motor rotating in this direction counterclockwise, it will actually tighten the bolt and nut as it turns. Now here I'm just hot gluing the fishing weight that I was talking about. Since I know that this will work, I can go ahead and hot glue it and I have it where I want it. And then I'm just gonna add some white duct tape around it to make sure it blends in a little bit better with the PVC and the glove. To also finalize, I'm gonna add some hot glue onto the dowel and the balloon stick to ensure that the balloon stick stays in that dowel and when it moves just like that. I then put the final bolts through the joint and took the tape off. Now we're going to start filling in the body. So I took the pool noodles and I cut them lengthwise and put them on the PVC. Now these are some extra balloon sticks from the 12 pack. And I added some duct tape around it like this and you could use any duct tape. I just had white so I just wanted to demonstrate with the white there. And then you want to make an oval shape like this and then I had another stick going down to connect to the torso. You then want to tape this oval shape to the two pool noodles on either shoulder as you can see in the video here. This should take two balloon sticks and you should have to push them in towards the middle to create kind of more of a circular shape. And then you wanna attach that down piece to the torso. So then we're gonna take two more pool noodles doing the same thing, cut them lengthwise. You wanna add them to that front part. And we're also gonna add some to the back as well. So this is what it should look like and you can always change anything you want. This is just how I did it. So now we're just gonna do the same thing, adding these to the arms, just to fill in those spots. And then we're gonna add one to this forearm. We don't have to worry about the bicep, but also make sure to rotate this. I'll show you what I mean later on. Now we're gonna add the hands. So to make the hands, I'm gonna take some newspaper and I'm just gonna fill in the fingers and the palm and just make sure that you get 
enough newspaper in the fingers because when it gets wet, it will break down much smaller. Also, my costume came with these gloves, so if yours doesn't, I'll find some on Amazon and link them below that should work. So just keep forming the hand until you like it, and then you want to slip it on over that pipe, and then attach it with some tape, or you can glue them down. I did end up gluing them down. So now that I have all the pool noodles cut to the right lengths, I went ahead and just put the costume back on completely, just to see how it looked and see if I need to make any adjustments. So then I cut these two pieces of pool noodles, they're about the length of the waist, and then I duct taped them on both sides as well as hot glued them at the end. But you can see I just wrapped it around the waist like that and then I added another short balloon stick just to hold it up. And then this gives the waist a little bit more structure and looks a little bit better. So here's a close up view of that balloon stick I was talking about and then I just taped both sides just to give it more of a round shape on the bottom towards the waist. Then below that, I added the same thing as the shoulder with the balloon sticks and the pool noodles cut out to length. Then to fill the legs, I just used these cardboard bags that I had. You can use newspaper, bubble wrap, anything just to fill in the legs just to give them a little bit more shape to look more natural. So then I added these pool noodles on the bottom just to give them more shape as well. So then make sure you have everything where you want it and then we can go in and finalize. So then I added this white cloth just to cover up those red pool noodles. This is actually just a t-shirt sleeve that I cut off. You could literally put anything, just anything white. Then I added some more white duct tape to that back pool noodle just to hide it a little bit better and make it blend in. Then we're gonna take the mask and we're gonna put it over this foam head. Also make sure to drill a hole in the bottom of this foam head for the PVC pipe to go into. Then I filled this grocery bag with more newspaper. You could fill it with just more grocery bags or anything that you want. And I put it inside the mask just to give the face a little bit more structure. Then I put it on just to see how it looked. And then we're gonna add that collar around his neck. So here you can see I'm wrapping it around. And I'm just gonna duct tape it at first just to get it in the correct position that I want. And then I'll go back after and hot glue it in to secure it down. So this was the pool glue I was referencing earlier. Make sure you turn it to the side like this so that the brace is able to rotate. And also I would recommend cutting a little divot into there just to allow it to rotate, which I didn't do it in that clip. And to get the sleeve over the motor, you have to detach the brace and then you can reattach it just like this and then pull the sleeve over. So if you have a smaller costume like I do, you might have a problem where the motor gets caught on the scrunched up part like this. So I added a balloon stick inside. You can kind of see it on the right there. And there's a better visual on the outside just to give it space. And you don't really even notice from the outside. So then I added these red pom-pom things just to kind of make it look more like clown boots, like Pennywise boots. Then to finally secure everything down, I added a screw into each joint like this. This way I can remove them for storage. And if I ever need to fix anything, it's not PVC glued in and it makes it a lot easier. You can see I also added some more tape here just to secure those noodles. I actually did end up hot gluing them as well, just for more security. Then to keep the mask on, I added some hot glue on the inside to the top of his head, and then I got it in a place I like. And then I went ahead and put my grocery bag back inside. I added some black duct tape to cover his mouth so he didn't have a white mouth, but I did want the white eyeballs because Obviously eyeballs are white, so the bag was perfect for that. And then I also added some tape and hot glue to secure the foam head down. This is a good look at the balloon on the balloon stick. To secure it, you can hot glue the stick, but do not hot glue the balloon. I put some clear tape on there. To connect the motor, I just use one of these extension cords that you can block off one of the sides. You can actually just cut this and splice it directly into the motor, but I ended up just doing this, and then I'll probably just put some tape on that side. And then this way you can run the wire through his leg and outside the pants, even through the boot. And then that way you won't see the wire at all.
the list of materials that I use and how much everything costs. It should be around $200 depending on where you are, but this list obviously does not include the tools that I already own, so that might be a little bit different for you. My build only cost me about $115, and that's because I got my costume at the end of the year last year from Spirit, and I will say the Spirit costume does not look as good as some of the ones on Amazon that I found. And the same goes for the mask. The mask that I used, I found at a bin store for $1. So if you just be patient and look around, you can find things and make super cool, cheap Halloween decorations. And hopefully, I'm going to get some more videos out for you guys showing you just how to do that. So thank you for watching.